in America, when it comes to brown and black people, you are seen as your skin color first. We're not trying to say you're black. We don't want to know. We're saying what you're seen as in America is black. We're not trying to erase your culture. We're not trying to say your parents are not this. We're not trying to say it doesn't matter. But we want you to understand what is seen in America is skin color, unfortunately. Now, what you do and what you represent with what you are being seen as matters. And that's why it's so pivotal that when something is happening to one of us in, in public, in school, at a workplace, on TV, on social media, we have to ask those questions. Drake is really big on, okay, I see that video. Let's do some research, you know, let me, let me go on this person's page and see, you know, you know, what their personalities, what, what they're into. Let me, let me do the research. The content of the character. Yes. Why this happened. And every week I feel like it's something. Love it, man. 25 items on my dresser. Yes, sir. I got stuck in pain. It won't be a little hit. Go read a book, you illiterate. Tell about this. Step up your vocab. Don't be surprised. Patience to these false accusations. They faking the shaking because the money you're making. Brick some money on the dresser. Drive a compressor. Top notch. Get the most. What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back. It is Everything Culture and A. She gets it, collab. And I'm Drake. And I'm Shan. And we're back with another episode. Wait, wait, wait. This is more than an episode. Okay, this is okay. a new series, okay? Oh, this is a know. new series. <laughs> and um, this series is special because I wanted Drake to do it with me for She Gets a Pod. And it, the whole point of it is to educate, enlighten different people from different cultures with the understanding of what Black people face on a daily basis through different topics. Oh, yeah. This is still a collaboration. We still have our pillars involved, um, which are respect, communication, and consistency. So throughout these conversations, we're going to be respecting one another. We're going to have communication between one another. And we want communication with you all, too, you know, in the comments as well as in the phone calls or the emails. And we're going to be consistent throughout those. We're going to respect y'all just the same. And we expect y'all respect us as well. Um, If you have something that... You may disagree with, or you have a mm-hmm. difference of opinion. That is a okay, mm-hmm. but you better check yourself at that door when you come over here. You know, Listen. before you make that comment, Listen. think about it. How to think, think, <laughs> think. Okay, and then share with us because yeah. we're all willing to learn something new. That's the goal for us to learn. Yeah, and we're you know a lot of what we will talk about won't be something super super new. I think what will be new is having issues being discussed with solutions. A lot of times when I hear uh the topics we will talk about it's a lot of arguing back and forth. It's a lot of uh, blame and there's not a lot of ownership and solutions at the end of it. So um, a lot of people leave exhausted and still with questions. Um, what I, my goal with this is to provide space for discussion, um, understanding and education and solutions. So there will be understanding across all cultures, not just for Black people. I think um, being the one facing different situations and different uh, issues is one thing, but to be on the outside of it and not understanding what the issue is in the first place is where we start uh, developing a solution. So, And it's very important to have that respect because you have to respect us to really empathize with us. So yes. come with yes. that. So uh, this fall, each week, you will be hearing an episode from us. It will be on She Gets a Pod platform and Everything Culture podcast platform. So you have options on where you can check it out. Sometimes it will be a different edit, a different uh, vibe you may get. But either way, it's going to be a great show. All of our contact information you can find in the show notes. And there will be a disclosure at the beginning of every episode just to let you know what you're about to get into. But either way, it's going to be a great episode that you're going to get. You might learn something. 
you might uh, feel, oh, they understand me about some things that you might feel like, well, I didn't, I didn't know that's where that came from. And that is yeah. the whole point. There's so many uh, ways Black people need help and may not know they need help. There's so many ways understanding the different cultures of people in your workplace can help make your work- workplace a better place, a more comfortable place to work in. And so that is our focus on this series. I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get into it. Purposeful, organic, captivating, optimistic. That's Poco. Our mission is to cultivate a safe space where all people can convene, co-create, feel celebrated, and build cross-cultural experiences while nourishing their body and soul. Why, why, Chantal? Why do you want to have the talks other people don't want to have? Um, because it needs to be done. It needs to be done so we can move forward. I think um, as a culture, no matter you know where your parents are from, or you know if you are brought here as a child, or if you grew up here, uh, we'll tell you a bit about where we're from, and then it will start to make sense. It will start to make sense on why we're having this discussion. A lot of what we're going to talk about, Drake and I and our other pod fam people talk about on a daily basis. All the time. But And and I I, I got to, I'm going to interrupt. I just love (laughs) how Shane is so patient with y'all. I'm like, they know. We yeah. get into it. They see all these conversations on social media all the time. They do. Some of these people that may be listening is part of those conversations, okay? Yeah. The thing is, we're trying to make progress through effective listening mm-hmm. and respect for one another and sharing our values. We're going to be opening yeah. it up to y'all. That's yeah. much what this episode is. We're going to be vulnerable. We may mm-hmm. cry a little bit. Mm-hmm. Shannon can cry. I may cry a little bit. Okay? <laughs> Shannon <Right. you. laughs> But it's one of those things because we're going to talk about the spectrum of being black yeah. here in America. It's important. Um, yeah. Okay, so for me, I was born in a Philadelphia, PA on the East Coast. Okay, shout out to my two and five people. Uh, my parents were both born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica. They did not grow up here. They came here as adults. Um, my father had his own business, uh, had properties and his focus was ownership. My mom, uh, worked for wealthy people. Um, when she first came here from Jamaica, uh, wealthy doctor, she took care of kids. She was very much into child education, um, taking care of people. And her whole thing is she wanted to become a nurse, something she didn't get to pursue um, because of her own medical issues. But uh, I am one of five. I am the youngest. I am the only girl. I am a mother. I am a sister. I am an auntie. Uh, I am a creator. Um, This is one of six podcasts that I do. I'm a very busy person. It's in the name at Shambi Podden because I be Podden. And um, my whole thing is throughout my upbringing, me going to uh, different schools along the East Coast, in the South, uh, going to college in Georgia, living in New York, um, just in the fashion industry and seeing how many different people from different ethnicities and culture backgrounds move up in a workplace versus the ones that don't, but still have talent. I, I've been exposed to different conversations and what uh, kids of different cultures get exposed to a little bit earlier than most Black adults. So um, throughout these episodes, I'll share some of my um, uh, experiences. I'll share some of my questions and I'll share some of my thoughts on different things because being 36 being a mom, being in the South still, I've seen, 
I've heard and I've felt a way through my experiences, but some things I'm still learning and I want to learn. And that's the key thing. And everything that we're going to discuss is that want to. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know how to be bitter? Do you want to know, you know, why certain cultures and people are this way? Do you want to know why people feel a way when certain things are said and done? And uh, that's what I want people to understand from this. Drake, where are you from? Tell these people about your background. You know, I'm South Side of Philia, okay? South Side American, <laughs> I would say. Um, I am bred, born, and raised Texan, okay? Mm-hmm. East Texan at that. I was actually born Fort Worth, Texas, then raised East Texas, spent my adult life in Southeast Texas, um, mm-hmm. Houston, y'all may know. But my parents um, from, once again, East Texas, Tyler, my mother from Tyler, my father from Mahia, Texas, mm-hmm. uh, close to Fort Worth, Dallas. And, you know, before that, like, I have a lot of strong roots in Clayton, Texas, which is part of Tyler, Texas, where known mm-hmm. for the red dirt, you know, outhouses, all family live across the street from each other. You know, co- very close knit family, close, close, very close country. OK, <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. Uh, fathers, uh, I know from Mahia all the way to I think Chicago, Oklahoma, Arkansas, mm. all families there. So, um, myself, a little bit more myself. Once again, I'm Drake with Everything Culture Podcast, and I love cultures, backgrounds, traditions, social norms. I love learning people, and that came from my experience of coming from a quote unquote small city, you know, mm-hmm. large town, and it was very. I can't say diverse. It was very segregated. You Mm -hmm. knew the black people stayed on this side of town. The white people stayed on this side of town. The Mexicans stayed on this side of town. And if you any other type of culture, you better pick one of the three because they're not really going to identify with you well. Through my education in high school, I went to predominantly white schools. I went to predominantly black schools. Um, When I was able to leave my hometown and move to Houston, Texas, I really had quite a bit of a culture shock and was able to really see some of my peers that like followed to Houston too, identified with their culture and their ethnicities, you could say. And I loved that. I thought that was a beautiful thing. I then, I majored in psychology and graduated from University of Houston, then worked for child welfare, the state of Texas for a couple of years working with families and foster care and once again, child welfare, family courts, you name it. And I started to learn more about the dynamics of families. You know, just every family got drama. Every family have do. issues. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. No matter how low in income or poverty or, um, you know, wealthy they may be, there's going to be certain issues and certain things, you know, they relate to. It's things we relate to and the things we still have differences as well. And I looked at always back to my family and to my culture of being a black American, American descendant of slavery, um, indigenous in my blood. You know, my maternal, paternal grandmother was, well, my maternal great grandmother was um, Blackfoot Cherokee and just getting to know the experience of, yo, there's a lot of different mindsets we have in this world Mm -hmm. even though we can look alike we may not always think alike so through my work working in child welfare once again and doing training and culture diversity or diversity equity inclusion for years i started my podcast everything culture to really explore different cultures and backgrounds traditions and getting to know people individually so you know, Shan shared has been on the show uh, with the yes. makings of Shan. A I have. Beautiful conversation, you know, and get, you know, check it out if you want to know more. But on this series, we're about to get into, you know, yeah. Shan hit me up about it. And I was like, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, this is going to be a treat. I look forward to, once again, educating everyone. I'm looking forward to learning myself. And I'm looking forward to having a progressive conversation with everybody here as well. Thanks. Okay. So one thing for sure, three things for certain. There will be no arguing on here. We don't argue. We discuss. Okay. Um, It is fair to disagree with what we say, um, what we hear. 
But what we won't do, unlike many lives and 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 different videos, is interrupt or mm. try to change the topic or try to say, well, what about this? We are here as two people who are seen as Black in America. We are here um, explaining the Black experience that is different for both of us, but similar in some ways. And we are here because we are both tired of Black people in the U.S. selling themselves short. Hmm. Um, And that can be uh, with reality TV, which does not help our image um, worldwide. It could be um, through the derogatory music and ignorance of not knowing who we are. Um, the yelling back and forth, the blaming, uh, the pigeonholing, the um, just trying to abandon who you are, where you came from to feel this illusion of comfort. Um, yeah, it, it definitely is sabotaging, self-sabotaging, but just knowing what the why on why we're doing it, not even knowing we're doing it when we're doing it. But um, realizing so subconscious. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, how psychologically there are reasons why we do it. Physically, there are reasons why we do it. Financially, what traumas have we gone through in our past or our parents gone through that was passed down to us to where we overconsume, overbuy, um, overuse as adults and what are what are our children seeing that we haven't corrected that is not gonna help them when we're gone because their generation is completely different. My kids' generation is completely different from the resources that they have and what I had. And what I did to get to where I am right now will be completely slow paced for them, completely um, not useful for them to do. So I have to figure out what their resources are, understand their resources and how to best, um, you know, guide them to utilize what they have in front of them so they could be in a better position than I am right now. And so uh, I'm not going to sit here and say there are no other podcasts that you could be listening to right now to understand Black culture. There are so many great podcasts um not the gossip ones but we know they exist but this uh, one y'all need to be listening to though okay period okay like once again she's like you know shannon's (laughs) being real sweet this is not the shan i'm used to right here i'm like this is but no need to listen to this one share it with your friends and your family like and when i say friends and family share it with your friends that are not black as well yes the ones that you like you know what hopefully and we're trying to keep it down to earth too we're not going to over talk. We're not going to use um, you know, large language and things. This right. is a casual conversation. Yes. This is not a textbook, okay? Yes, yes. Um, but I just, I just want people to understand that there are great shows giving black must have knowledge, like One Mic History, Wild Back, Historically Black, uh, School Colors. The the sixteen nineteen project is a great one. Um, witness black history black history buff not so black and white black belt voices and there's so many more um that are on their way and there's so many more that are there for you to um listen to and educate yourself on and like i was saying earlier it's that want to do you want to know why do you want to learn about your coworker? do you want to learn about you know the nanny that comes to your house do you want to um understand the man that has the uh, corner store and is trying to fight for his corner store to stay so it doesn't get taken over by a large corporation. Do you want to know why people um, who are Black in the United States may lack this ideal um, want of community? Um, Do you know where the resistance... You know why people supporting Deion Sanders in Colorado right now? Yes. Do you understand why they're so important to athleticism from Coco to Serena to LeBron and why we say it's not just being an athlete, it's so much more. Right. Once again, we are, you know, once again, respect as a human being mm-hmm. and our individualism as well and our collectivism, collectivism all together. Yeah. Yeah. I think um what I want people to get out of each episode is value. 
um, education, enlightenment, and understanding. Okay, I understand Black people a bit more better today because I heard this, or I want to talk to my family about this, or, you know, teach your kids, did you know that, you know, this was invented by this, or this is why they do this, or this is what this means when you see this. There's so much that is not being taught in quote unquote US history in this country on purpose. And what we don't know, we'll, we will repeat as a nation. Um, what we don't teach our kids will continuously happen um, as a nation. And what we ignore will not just disappear and go away. And so with this series, I just want people to become more aware that no matter what the culture background um, is in America when it comes to brown and black people, you are seen as your skin color first. We're not trying to say you're black, we don't wanna know. We're saying what you're seen as in America is black. We're not trying to erase your culture. We're not trying to say your parents are not this. We're not trying to say it doesn't matter, but we want you to understand what is seen in America is skin color, unfortunately. Now what you do and what you represent with what you are being seen as matters. And that's why it's so pivotal that when something is happening to one of us in, in public, in school, at a workplace, on TV, on social media, we have to ask those questions. Drake is really big on, okay, I see that video. Let's do some research, you know, let me let me go on this person's page and see, you know, you know, what their personalities, what what they're into. Let me let me do the research. The content of the character. Yes, you know, why I, this happened. And every week I feel like it's something where it is. It is. It's a it's a repeated discussion. You know, um even today, you know, you find out a celebrity's uh relationship change and now it becomes a think piece. And I just I'm just like, are y'all not exhausted? Are y'all not exhausted with trying to figure out other people's lives that have nothing to do with you? Um, there's bigger things to focus on, like community, like um, having accountability for how you show up in your family's household, how you show up at work. Um, what do you represent every time you leave your home? What do your kids see? How do they treat other people? How do you treat other people? Do you do anything forward-minded in your community? Okay. But, if you see, and we have to be, we have to acknowledge. And I know some people need breaks. It's okay to take your time and take time off for yeah. a distraction. But that procrastination affects us all. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure through our conversations, it's not only to educate everyone, but it's right. to motivate you all as well. Yeah. It's like we're not going to give you everything, okay? Because mm -hmm. we don't know everything. But we want you to go out and do research. We want you to go out and talk to your neighbors. We want to go out and talk to your community leaders, your politicians. We want you to go out and learn more and do more and understand our collective work that we do. I mm -hmm. think it's going, I know, I just don't think it shows so far in history. That's how we can make progress is working right. together. Right. So hopefully this is the hope. It's already been sparked. As Shannon's expressed, we have so many other people doing the work that we're doing yeah. um, right here, but we need more. You know, we got yeah. a lot of shoulders. We need more. Right. We'll talk um, about don't that. let what's good be unsaid. And that's the whole focus Correct. for this whole series. We're going to say it. We're going to um, explain it. And we're going to give you solutions at every episode in this uh, series right here. Um, because we know, like, what's against us. We know. Mm -hmm. um, what what our parents faced, those that do know their uh, background. And if you don't know your background, you have resources today where you can research that for yourself. You can find out your history for yourself if you want to. And my whole thing is like, what are we going to do moving forward? What are we setting up? You know, we still have 26% of households that still live in high uh, poverty areas compared to 5% of white households. Why is that there? Do we understand how we can change that? So discussions like that is what I want to have. Um, where do our behavioral issues come from? 
is it changing? Is it improving? Is it getting worse? Why is it getting worse? Is there something we could do to change that? Um, you know, why, you know, is it that the changes in the workplace are faster for others, slow for others? You know, why are we earning a bit less doing the same thing? You know, so it's really like educating yourself and knowing like what questions we need to ask. Um, why do you identify yourself a certain way? Um, what does that leave you out of? You know, are you really the minority? And understanding that you not being into politics, it, it doesn't really help you. <laughs> because you are into politics, whether you choose to vote or not. You voting is to be looked at as currency, okay? Because someone is making this, a decision on how you live, where you live, and what resources you get on the places that you live, whether you do or you don't. And really having an understanding of how this all works, laws, um, what's set in place structurally, um, how we can educate ourselves, uh, what health uh, battles we face has a lot to do with the decisions we make. And um, are we in a position to make those decisions? Are you in an area where you can make better decisions? So all of those things throughout the different topics we'll talk about um, in a way where everyone can gain understanding. Uh, Drake's still going to bring his good vibes from everything culture on here. We're still going to be on TikTok having discussions on the episode that dropped weekly. Uh, you will have a great fall winter time with us. Um, we will still be representing who we are to the fullest. Um, we'll, we're still doing our separate podcasts and we're still going to be here willing to teach, understand, and express um, everything we know that can help the community. So I hope you guys listening with a understanding ear. Um, I hope you're willing to listen to the solutions that we have. And I hope that, you know, you're just as excited as it is um, that we are because I'm used to saying some things on this mic um, for 20 seasons so far. This is the 21st season for She Gets a Pod uh, that are a bit left. So this will be uh, a new type of season for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try to keep things in check, and if the yeah. people who know me, y'all know I have a strong emphasis on history, strong emphasis yeah. on people, and but I, Shan is one of my favorite people, pie fam, through and through, and yeah. you know I want to make sure we detail. No, once again. Make sure when we're speaking facts, we're speaking facts. Mm -hmm. When we're speaking our opinions, we're speaking our opinions, or when we're speaking our truths. So mm -hmm. I think it's valuable for us to come together and have this experience with everyone here. Um, I'm absolutely, they want to get excited for where mm -hmm. we're going to go. Um, not so much nervous, you know, they, they kind of go hand in hand. Right. But this is something that we place. all grow from. Is it a safe space? But I'm it's like, it's a safe place. Yeah, <laughs> it's a safe place. But I'm not you know, downloading gonna, no pictures on here. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about the spectrum of being black in America, and yeah. this ain't because we're talking specifically about being black in America right now. Not right. saying racism and discrimination and systematic oppression does not exist outside of America, but right. we're going to be specific on America. Now later on, we can touch on that. So we're going to yeah. keep our place and understand how it can be better and have more unity between one another too right so i hope you guys enjoy um thank you for being here thank you for clicking play and uh we will check you guys next episode and here's a clip for next episode coming up so shan i gotta ask you hmm. when did you first realize you were black Ooh. I will say I was in the second grade in Philly and we had a field trip. Um, we had a field trip to go to the Y for that month. And um, that was the first time I've ever been to a pool and we were learning how to swim. And I like this. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe, uh, maybe. I'll keep waiting. You ready, Drake?
Let's go. Right. Um, as always, that we are going to end with the pillars as well as the mission statement of everything culture. Come on. Which our pillars have been, once again, respect, communication, and consistency. Our mission statement comes from, comes from the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And that is, he believed that men hate each other because they fear each other. They fear each other because they did not know each other. And they don't know each other because of segregation. And because of segregation, we have miscommunication. So thank you all for being here. Let's get to know each other so we can love one another and continue on. Peace. Later.